I'm Greg Jarrett, and you are in the Strategy Room. The Obama administration seems to be starting a social media food fight of sorts with Israel. Now, the White House took an apparent swipe at Benjamin Netanyahu, tweeting Wednesday, quote, Worth sharing, here's how the hashtag Iran deal would shut down Iran's pathway to a nuclear weapon. And then they attached this cartoon, almost identical to the chart that was held up by Netanyahu during his now famous 2012 United Nations speech. Here with reaction, political strategist Tony Saig, David Mercer. Gentlemen, good to see you both. Tony, what do you make of it? Good to be with you. Well, look, I mean, it's very sad that the administration continues down this acrimonious and adversarial road and tone with our strongest and most steadfast allies, certainly in the region. Um, but it really goes to show you, I think, that this president and, and his administration do not take well to legitimate disagreements. They have it with Israel. They have it now with several Senate Democrats, including Chuck Schumer, um, Ben Cardin, the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, both very steadfast Democrats who are now saying any deal has to get passed through the Congress. This is the Corker Amendment many people have been talking about of late. But when you really look at even this graphic that the president and the administration tweeted out and what they're trying to say, it really goes to undermine really the credibility of their argument. Number one, the president himself said in an interview with PBS this past weekend that Iran can very possibly get a nuclear weapon within 10, 10 years, 10 to 13 years, and that at that point the breakout time would be zero. He wants to make a deal to make sure they don't get it on his watch, something else he said in that interview, and, that, and right. that's only 20 months. The other part is, in this graphic, they say two-thirds of centrifuges are going to be reduced. Does Iran know that? I don't think they do, because they certainly wouldn't be celebrating in yeah. Iran the way they've done. So there's a lot of misinformation coming out of this White House. You know, David, uh, I was reading through the social media reaction to this, and wow, um, it's pretty critical of President Obama and the White House uh, saying that you know, using this sort of cartoon diagram, it really is amateurish and cheap. What do you think? Well, first, if I might speak to that question and what Tony mentioned, you know, this uh, uh, quote-unquote acrimony, one, I don't think it's risen to that level, but let's not forget what Netanyahu did in cahoots with John Boehner in not communicating to the commander-in-chief, to the president of the United States, in disrespect to the office of the presidency right. to have an address in front of Congress um, without consulting uh, the president, and in addition, doing so two weeks before the elections in Israel. So this did not start yesterday or with a tweet yeah. from the administration. Yeah, I, go. I Second, get it. Yeah, I get it, David. Yeah, but let me yeah, get to, get to yeah. my question, if you would. Sure. And that sure. is the method by which they are messaging here, this sort of cartoon uh, attached to a tweet. Uh, I mean, it's not yeah. terribly high-minded and above board, is it? Well, it's certainly above board because it's on Twitter, it's public, it's uh, everybody can comment on it, as you alluded to, Greg. What I will say is that there is maybe some uh, jest or a little ribbing in that it takes the uh, diagram of the bomb from uh, U from the U.N. speech that Netanyahu gave, but it's making a very serious point, and that is that the framework for the agreement that we hope comes to pass June 30th will, in fact, um, de derail any efforts by the yeah. Iranians to secure the bomb. Well, and so that is what they're communicating. That's the overall message. And they're doing it, let's say, in a, uh, in a less than uh, sober way, yeah. but in a lighthearted way. But the point being that this is to stop Iran from getting uh, uh, the bomb. Tony, my reference I to above board was really a, a, a reaction to what you had said. If you really closely examine the diagram, we could put it up again one more time, it doesn't exactly represent the facts and the truth of this deal. And indeed, breakout capacity could be nine months to a year. And so to suggest 10 years is, is not really true, is it? It's not true at all. In fact, the president, again, himself revealed this. Now, they're trying to obviously do damage control based on the, the interview he granted PBS this past weekend. But sometimes, you know, in, in a moment like that, you do end up telling the truth, even if I guess you're President Obama. I will remind my good friend David that the acrimony started when President Obama, in a hot mic moment, was caught complaining about how much he had to deal with President, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, several years ago. So let's yeah. not pretend that this is even something that happened in, in, the, in the last month or two. The aspect of this, that I think, is the most troubling, is that you have a president 
who is so singularly focused on a deal, even a bad one, that he's not willing to listen to our allies in Israel. He's not willing to listen to Congress, and not just Republicans. I mentioned before the importance of the fact that we are on the verge of securing a potentially veto-proof majority to force the president to send any deal to right. the Congress, and this only comes with the unification yeah. of Democrats and All Republicans. Right. The last I'm out of point. time. I think I've got, a, I got okay. to leave it at that. Tony and David, uh, come back soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Greg. Happy. Check Happy. out foxnews.com for more on this developing story. I'm Greg Jarrett. Thanks for watching.